you're doing good. Start the the year is winding down. It's kind of wild yes. to think about that. It just like man, I I still feel like it's the start of the year, and it's I, not. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about time and say, you know what, this feels like when it is. <laughs> we all keep acting like being surprised I mean, by time is new. I think it happens all the time yeah. in every time <laughs> that's just how time works right but no i i feel like there are day, 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 days that you're just like man it's tuesday and it really <laughs> is tuesday right <laughs> this is uh, thoroughly a tuesday 100 exactly, percent exactly. saturated platonic uh, tuesday except today is a wednesday because Ladies and gentlemen, if you did not know, this is episode 216 of the Whatnots Captain's Log, where each week we thirst for the taste of, I was about to say vengeance again, we thirst for the taste of legend. We're back for vengeance once more. Here Kyle! We go. <laughs> You're Kyle, I'm Melissa. I had the legend! I tasted it! I tasted the legend! Did you? It was good! A good legend! There you go! There you go. Good stuff. Tell me a bit, bit, bit about it. What'd you do? What, 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 how, how did you come to taste the legend? Jack and I just wanted Buffalo Wild Wings, and that's where Mountain Dew Legend is. It is a Buffalo Wild Wings exclusive. There you so go. So <laughs> I, I had to take the chance. I had it. I did enjoy it. It's dark. It is a dark soda. It is blackberry yep. ginger flavored. So it is blackberry colored. I could have imagined that. Yeah. But boy, is it weird to be drinking a Mountain Dew so dark in hue. Right. That's not just like bright neon green. Like yeah. Something irradiated out of some 1950s. It's like sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. All that good stuff. Speaking of sodas, I have the Ooh. last of my <gasps> little fancy craft sodas that, that I bought uh, like two months ago um, from Pops. This one is a like a clear blue color, uh, translucent blue. It's Dad's Old Fashioned Blue Cream Soda. Dad, from Pops. Yeah. yeah, it's from Pops. Exactly, yeah. Um, so I am opening up this guy. It's right very now. funny that they call it an old fashioned blue cream soda, like adding blue coloring right. to things is what they did in like 1935. Well, I because there there is um like big red out in the like te Texas area and stuff. And I know yes. there is like big blue, I think, is also the one like it's it's the same kind of thing, but it's a bl blue one. So I know like blue sodas are a thing they've been around for a while I, I i just don't know if this if they've like taken off as much as the like the cola and the sprite equivalent and mm -hmm. the like root beer and the yeah well i don't do all, all, all that good stuff so dad's old-fashioned blue cream soda here we go tell me if it tastes blue no it does not. Oh, um, I like it a lot. I mean, it's, it's just it's it's a cream soda. It's what you would expect. But there's no there there is no like blue flavor. It's not blueberry. It's not blue raspberry. Um, it like if 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 this was a blind taste test, I'd just be like, yeah, it's just a cream soda. Mm. So good old fashioned blue cream soda. Wow, go. just in time for Avatar, The Way of Water. R right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> On our blue-colored podcast, The Captain's <laughs> I have a blue soda. I'm blue. Dabba deeb, dabba die. Um, Melissa, we got some yeah. exciting stuff to get to this Ooh, week. boy. Yeah, it's our tomato game! I'm super excited. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Melissa, we have done this game for a handful of years now. I think this is our like third or fourth year. We started it in early, like February 2020. And we That's predicted right. Rotten Tomatoes scores so for movies time. that were supposed to come out that year. 
Uh, and we decided we were going to make it a yearly thing. February is just when we thought about doing it. And right. then we're like, really, we should do this like first weekend of December. First week of December, we do this and we can't, we predict the movies from December to December. So that December, we December 2020, we we got the scores on what we could on what came out that year. And Little then we did, did we it. know that there would be a global yeah. pandemic. <laughs> we did it last year. And this is our. Uh, I guess our fourth episode where we're making predictions and our third one where we're reading results. So it's, cool. it's a little tradition and it's one of my favorites. It's, it's a blast. It's, it really is a good one here. Uh, so it's essentially what we do, we have around 20 to 25 movies that we feel like are highly anticipated. We might th- throw some personal uh ones on there like i in particular am really looking forward Mm -hmm. to the just one whereas maybe everyone else might not be or i might be but you might not be all that good stuff but around 20 to 25 movies and then we each predict what we think the rotten tomatoes score of the movie will be Uh, and so here we are at the end of the year we're gonna go back and look at all of the predictions we made at the end of last year to see how close we we are closest one gets a point yeah the end of the game the one who has the most p- points wins we typically play for pizza just like who, yeah. whoever right <laughs> <laughs> we venmo each other i don't know what we say is the cost of a pizza 10 12 dollars <laughs> like Something your like average yeah. large domino <laughs> yeah uh, but it's good. It's a lot of fun. And then we like to add in these like extra kind of predictions, whether or not yeah. we follow through with them or not is another thing. <laughs> but uh, they're fun we, ideas. We, we do like to make some some predictions. Um, and we have stuff, so. we have learned to stop making predictions based on box offices. We're like, no, more, no more of that box office too unpredictable. <laughs> what if nobody can go to a theater? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool. I I think that pr- pretty much explains it and what we're going to be up to this episode. Um, so I I I say we do housekeeping right now to just get that out of yeah. the way, and then when we get back, I can pull everything up here and uh, get started. Yeah. Get started. So yeah, that sounds good. We will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash The Whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, and we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. We thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, Melissa, right before you and I got on to record this, you and I just recorded our Patreon exclusive podcast for the month of December. So that will be up very shortly if it's not up uh, by time this goes out public uh, to everyone on their podcast feeds. Uh, this month on the Pilots Club, we are we we watched Smash, uh, which I think you said was from around like 2012, 2010 ish. Yeah. Um, the, they, uh, they did have an advertisement musical for Tron drama. Legacy in, in wow. one thing in 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 the scene there, but uh, yes, that, please continue. It is a musical drama. It was a show that was about the production of a fictional Marilyn Monroe musical, and I'd love to get those time capsules of anytime anything shoots in Times Square. 
Did you see what was on What's Broadway on? Yeah. that week? That is exciting. Yeah, what are they doing, Jersey Boys? <laughs> Show exactly. me. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so we we had a good time discussing Smash. Uh, you guys can get that on Patreon uh, for the three dollar tier and above. Besides that, though, cool things that we've been up to here at the Whatnots. Uh, Melissa, you and I just started our holiday themed pitches for the review show. Uh, so this past week, what just uh, is about to what came out to. Day, 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 actually, yeah. actually, the day that we're recording this uh, was the Muppet Christmas Carol. You and I watched that and got to discuss that one. Uh, and then for the final episode of the review show for the year, you and I are returning to the year 2000 to watch the Nickelodeon movie Snow Day, which I have not <laughs> seen or thought about yeah. once since the year 2000 except for the fact that i know i loved that back in the day <laughs> so i'm so excited to watch that it's gonna be a lot of fun uh speaking of final stuff for the year i think next week will be our final episode of the captain's log proper uh yeah. be before our like end of uh the year anniversary retrospective uh which you and i will be recording on the 18th um, so a lot of, uh, good fun stuff planned for that. Be on the lookout. Uh, last but not least, we have some, some new trailer reactions up. We did cocaine bear, uh, a trailer reaction to cocaine bear. You guys should go check that one out. Um, as well as a few other things. And then Melissa, you, you and I need to discuss how, we want to cover the uh, National Treasure show on Disney Plus because it starts the 14th, <sighs> but I don't think we're going to get to it until the new year. So let's. I don't even know how much of it there is. How long of a show that's a, is that's that? That's also something we need to look up and discuss. Let's, is it four episodes? Is it nine? Is it 18? Who knows? Let's just do one. Let's just do one episode at the end of that thing. I don't know if I need to check in very That's frequently fair. about the National Treasure Disney Plus show. <laughs> That's fair. Although That's speaking fair. of which, speaking of which, to Friday, that animated Night at the Museum movie comes out. Don't know a mm. thing about it besides the little blurb we got at D23. But I do have a big soft spot for Night at the Museum. So I will be watching it. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Uh, I think that's about it for housekeeping right now. So let's get on with the tomato game. Let's have some fun with that. Should be good. I wish we had okay. a sound we could play. I, I Next mean, year, can we have a we tomato do a sound? Man dance party. Yeah. We, we, too we, long. We, too we long. We don't like, have a minute to spare. We need a good like tomato splat sound or something. I, I guess that is too much of a D -d -d downer sounds the splat yeah there's there, no right? victorious some, like, tomato sound we need some jingle some tomato jingle right <laughs> we need just like an enthusiastic chef yes yeah just like fuck yeah tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like if we can find a jolly italian chef as stereotypical as that is just somebody being like that's a fine tomato <laughs> good stuff uh cool let me pull up on screen here what we got oh melissa you are sh showing on screen because i have you there bam cool yeah um okay so here's our list of predictions from last year and we need to go through it and see who who got closest who won who did all of that stuff um i also have rotten tomatoes hold up over here uh, so we can do all of that stuff melissa what is our first movie that we need to look up here spider-man no way home yeah yes spider-man we no way do home. our kyle you have to give me editing access to the spreadsheet you you only oh, gave me viewing access edit. damn it okay well, let's see if i can do this um well, you do that. I will remind the listener. Yes, we do this Editor. from first we week of December to la to the next first week of December. 
So we are talking about movies that have come out so far in 2022 and movies from right at the end of 2021, which is going to be Spider-Man No Way Home, Nightmare Alley, The Matrix Resurrections, The King's Man. (laughs) And sometimes we'll do these. It's also fun to predict what movies is anybody going to remember by the end of the year? And what movies should we have put on here that we just didn't know were going to be notable? Indeed. Uh, if you refresh the page, you should have editing access now. If not, let me know and I can send you the link again on Discord, but it should be set that you can edit things. Ah, uh, yeah, I can type. I'm good. I'm good. There you are. I see you there now. You're the uh, the anonymous ant eater. There you go. <laughs> I, got to, I signed in. Let me sign in again. OK, now I should oh, be myself. Anyways um i it's showing anonymous on my end but that's not anything we need to wor- worry about i just like all you the know it's me la- 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 stuff you're the anonymous dinosaur now whoa yeah jurassic cool um spider-man no way home i predicted a 92 melissa you predicted a 91 <laughs> Real, I don't remember close. my reasoning. Spy, not Spider Home, Spider Man. No way home. Let's see what it got. It got a ninety-three. Ooh, good. We were spot on with that one. Point goes to me on that one. Um, let's see here. I always like to just mark these. Green. Cool. I I'm color that. coding them. Yeah. Okay. So you're doing the results. I'm color coding the results. The results. You're, okay. you're gold and okay. I am, I, I'm I, red. I will let you do do that then. Color coding spreadsheets is literally what I do for 40 hours a week. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, next up, Nightmare Alley. This was out December 17th, same day as uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. I think I watched this on HBO. B.O. Max, because it was out like that same day, right? Or like that month later, I think. Yeah, like a month later, it was there. I think it was also on Hulu. Uh, mm. Might have been a a 20th century release, because I think there were Death of the Nile. I think it was also a movie that was on both platforms. I gotcha. I gotcha. OK, Nightmare Alley. Let's see here. Uh, I said a 93. You said a 95. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro really talked this one up. I put this one on here for directorial excitement and to try and class up uh, all our assorted franchise films. He did, yeah. Nightmare Alley. Let's see here. It got a 81. Ooh. 81. Point also goes to you. Nightmare Alley. uh, Plot didn't come together for me, but boy, what a beautiful film. Like technically, yes, yes. really impressive it on that. Incredible. Plot. I I I thought that it's to me. It wasn't that the plot didn't come together. It was just a weird one, right? <laughs> it, it, it it ended up just being really weird. Um, but the, yeah, I I still liked it a lot. Next up, we got the Matrix Resurrections, real divisive film here. Um. I predicted an 84. Melissa, you predicted a 73. Let's see here. The Matrix Resurrections. It got a. Boop, boop, boom, 63 across the Ooh. board, too. Also wow. on the audience score, 63. Interesting. All right. Point That's- to me. Point to Melissa. Yeah, I I ended up liking that one. I can see why it was not great in a lot of people's eyes. It was fine. Yeah, fine for me. And I'd never seen any of these. I I watched all the Matrixes in a row for the first time this year. Yep. Um, Okay. The King's Man is next. (laughs) 
I haven't seen any of these movies, but I've I've always heard that people enjoy them. So I scored this one higher than you, you did by quite mm. a bit. I gave this one an 81. And Melissa, you predicted 66. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. King's Man. What did this get on Rotten Tomatoes? It got. A 41 on the tomato meter. However, it got an 80 on the audience score. Good for them. Yeah. I. There is a local theater that has a large arcade in it. And included Mm -hmm. in that arcade is like a two lane bowling alley that I guess (laughs) is broken or something because they've got it cordoned off. It's blocked off so nobody can get back there. And they've blocked it off with giant cardboard standees. And it's all and it's all from movies from late last year, beginning of the year, like movies that are not notable. They just had large standees. That's the entire point. So I think they have two big standees for the King's Man, one death on the Nile, one Channing Tatum's (laughs) dog, (laughs) a house of Gucci's back there. It's such a fascinating little time capsule. Every time I go to that theater, I'm like, did they swap any out? Who's there now? Uh, Well, speaking of things that might be lurking back there in those weird, dark, dusty corners. (laughs) uh, (laughs) The next one is Morbius. Morbius. Uh, I still have yet to watch this one. I have promised myself that i would watch it before the end of this year so oh boy in case it makes your top 10 right right, at the the start of next year when i like to do my here's all the stats of like all the movies (laughs) i watch all the shows i want like i want morbius to be in there it needs to be in there um but i predicted morbius would be a 64 melissa you predicted a 60 so let's go see Morbius. What did Morbius get? Morb. Oh, oh shit. It got a 15. 15? It got Unheard a 15. Of. The audience score is a 71. <laughs> but oh my God, a 15. Wow. I, I knew p- p- people thought it was bad i i knew that yeah. it was really bad but wow yeah anything less than like 30 is truly remarkable yes yes uh which is is interesting because this next movie moonfall uh that we have <gasps> on our list melissa have, did did you end up watching this one yet because i think we no put but this I... one on the list for, for for you because you thought the trailer was so ridiculous yeah I, I put it on here as a goof i thought let's put one really ridiculous like sci-fi action disaster movie on here uh i've not watched it but i have heard two different podcasts recap it to me so i feel like i've seen it interesting uh well i predicted this movie would get a 34 and you predicted a 20 on Rotten Tomatoes. So let's go see. I predicted it would what? be better than Morbius. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Moonfall. Let's see what Moonfall got. Oh, better than Morbius. It got a 36. Wow. That's over twice a Morbius. <laughs> you win that one. Wow. Wow. Point to me. Interesting. That one also got like a 70 on the audience score. Maybe it's fun. I mean, I, I, we've never I, seen I, the I moon like, fall before. That's fresh. I I feel like there's very few movies that the audience score is so drastically low. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people go to movies and even the bad ones that they see, they're mm-hmm. just like, I had a good time, like making fun yeah, of it. It's, it's, fun. A, it's swimming in sevens, yeah. right? It's a seventy-ish. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've seen a wildly higher critic score than an audience score before. Like even for some inscrutable at, at art not movie, one that's so the, 
drastically. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like the critical body is like so wide and varied. Even what you think is like a critical darling. It is a critical darling for some people. And other ones are like, what was that? They're just sipping a, like it's sitting around and drinking tea. That's all the movie was. This is boring. It, it's gonna Kyle, be like for 2023, 70. can you give me a week of pitches that are what you think these tea movies. drinking critical <laughs> darling movies are? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a g- good one. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh okay. Next up, we have Death on the Nile. I predicted a 75. Melissa, you predicted a 67. Mm. Let's look up Death on the Nile. This one ended up getting a 62. Pretty feel good. like that's right about where it should be, to be honest. I ended up watching that that, that one on like Netflix or t- something. Mm. Just like I told eh. you earlier, it was HBO Max or Hulu. Did, well, that was Not for a Nightmare Alley. No, Though like I, both I of them. I saw both of them on both platforms. They must have been put uh, out by the same same company same i don't can't tell you which deal. company but i can tell you i saw them i know where i saw them at i can put them in a lineup ma'am ma'am where did you see this movie i saw it on the hulu <laughs> menu it. officer the one. <laughs> <laughs> um next up we got uncharted uh i have still yet yet to watch this one even though i'm a big fan of the video g- g- games i figured this would be a bad movie I predicted it would get a 50. Melissa, you predicted a 61. You had a little Mm -hmm. bit more faith in it than I did. Let's see here. Uncharted. What did Uncharted get? Uncharted got a 41. Ah. With an audience score of 90. Wow. There we go. Point to me. Cool, cool, cool. Uh... Next up, the Batman. Got emo Batman. Um, let's see. I predicted a 79. Melissa, you predicted in 83. In hindsight, these scores seem, seem rude. real low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's see. Let's see what it got. The Batman with Robert Pattinson. It got a 85. Oh, it's a p- point to you a on little that higher. One, yeah. It was a very good movie. It was just very long. This is the thing, <laughs> right? That they, could have been a part of it. Scene yeah. of them sitting around sipping tea. It was just that it was <laughs> it, it was bad, you know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um next up, we got Turning Red. This one, let's see, I predicted an 87, and Melissa, you predicted a 90. So let's look up turning red here. It got a 95. Ah! 95, 95. the year of the first Pixar movie, Toy Story. It's very auspicious. Good old fun fact. Um, next up, Sonic 2. <laughs> I predicted a 34. Melissa, you predicted a 45. I, 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 I think this is also one in hindsight. I now feel like these scores are pretty low. People like mm-hmm. these Sonic movies. Yeah. Um, so let's let's go look up what Sonic 2 got. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 69. Nice. <laughs> yeah, real low. Great point, real point low. to me. Man. Okay, next up, Fantastic <laughs> Beasts. <laughs> I and just want to take a second one. and put put these in perspective. So sure. Sonic 2 is better than <laughs> Uncharted, Death on the Nile, Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile bested by sonic 2 it's better than matrix resurrections it's better than kings man gotta go fast man you know what i mean that's that was the problem with the king's man he wasn't fast enough ray fines didn't (laughs) eat enough chili dogs 
<laughs> yeah, that's what Morbius got at 15. Not enough chili dogs. <laughs> Um, next up, we have Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. Th- this one, we had a big discrepancy. I said a yeah. 70. I thought this one would be fine. <laughs> Melissa, you, you said a 32. I, I, I saw the first Fantastic Beasts. I had an, an, an all right, a, a sufficient time. A sufficient sure. time was had at Fantastic Beasts the first. Did not see the second one. Uh, d- did not hear positive reviews of it. Yeah. Third one. I tr- I also have no idea how this one did. I I've not heard from anybody who has gone on to see all of these. Fantastic beasts and the secrets of Dumbledore. Here we go. What did it get? It got a forty-six. Oh, forty-six. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay, Melissa, you are crushing it right now. I'm only on the board so far with four points. You have four, five, six, seven, eight Eight. points. Come on, Kyle, not enough chili dogs over here. (laughs) Next up, we got Doctor Strange 2. I predict a 78. Melissa, you predicted an 85. I have a feeling you're going to win this one. Uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Here we are. It got a 74. Oh. I got huh. a point on that one. Interesting. What was the the audience score is an 85? Huh. I, I feel like, well. I, I, the, the, there was so much that I liked about that movie. And a lot that I didn't not in the sense that I felt it was like, oh, these were bad choices, but just like I like Wanda and they just they just did her dirty. But it was also everything that was in line with her character that I think people fail to see so far. I don't know. And then they just didn't really do anything with America. Then she was just there. She didn't really need to be there. So, yeah, I don't know. But another point to me. Uh. So we there are a couple of mm-hmm. movies on our list here who got delayed out of this year into the next year. John Wick 4 being one of them. Um, so I moved that down to our list um, for this next year. Uh, but after that, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, man, I think we're both surprise really of the wrong. year. <laughs> I, yeah, I predicted a 62. Melissa, you predicted a 69. 79 or 79 yeah uh let's see to your top gun maverick if this is not high 90s i'm gonna murder someone uh let's see top gun maverick it got a 96 yeah it absolutely deserved with an audience score of 99 oh my yeah yeah i I feel 99 about it that movie was awesome I I have been looking at my local. Okay, so at the St. Louis Science Center, we've got mm-hmm. an IMAX screen that is a dome. They call it mm. the OmniMax. It's a dome. It surrounds you, and they show those science documentaries, but they'll also put like IMAX formatted blockbusters in there. Right. And I've been keeping an eye on it to see if Avatar: Way of Water is going to get in there or not. I don't know if it is because like the day Avatar comes out, instead they're putting Top Gun Maverick back in there. It's like, yeah. I might go see that in Omnimax. You should just for the experience. That'd be so much fun. Oh, man. Um, something else I think they tried to do just for the experience. Put dinosaurs in a theme park and see how that worked out. <laughs> it didn't. Next up is Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, I predicted a 54. Melissa, you predicted a 44. Let's see what uh, Jurassic World Dominion. It got a 29. Huh. With an audience score of 77. 
29. So, Melissa, you get the point for that one as well. Uh, I think I think if I need to if 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 I want to win this, I need to start putting some points up on the board here. Otherwise, <laughs> I think I'm buying Melissa a pizza. I don't know if I can catch up. Uh, That's funny because I'm the red one. I'm the catch up and you're the mustard uh, on this color coded right. chart. Either way, you're light years ahead of me. And speaking of light years, Melissa, the next movie is a light year. <laughs> Kyle, you went whole hog on light year. You predicted light year will be the best reviewed movie of the year. A 96, uh, you said, list, for Mr. Lightyear. Pixar, Toy Story. Who doesn't love that stuff, right? Sci-fi action. I predicted <laughs> a 96. Melissa, you predicted an 89. I, I think this movie didn't do as well as everyone had hoped. Chris Evans, right? Even he started that. 74. Solid. Is what okay. this one got. So not, not as Still? bad, but solid, solid, solid. Have, I uh, haven't seen it yet. I'm sure I will. I don't want there to be a Pixar movie I haven't seen. I'm sure I will have a 74 of a time. There you go. Lots of corn dogs or uh, chili dogs to be had. (laughs) Next up, we have Thor Love and Thunder. I predicted a 90. Melissa, you predicted an 84. Let's see. Thor Love and Thunder. It got a... 64 on the tomato meter. Interesting. Huh. A 77 audience score. There you go. 64. That seems real low. Yeah. I can, uh, I can understand more critics not being as high on Marvel movies as, say, like you and I typically are. But even mm-hmm. that seems low for like where Thor Love and Thunder is. I don't know about I, that. Yeah, one. I, it's a weird I, one. I, I, it is a movie I've found that like I haven't really thought about since I watched it. Like I had fun in it, theaters it, and then it, 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 it really flaws. hasn't stayed with me. It absolutely has its flaws. We talked about that on our spoiler spoiler cast and it's just stuff like that but even then 64 seems a little low um but next up is nope nope uh i predicted in 86 melissa you predicted a 90 let's see what uh see what everyone else thought nope on rotten tomatoes it got an 82 on the tomato meter oh and a 69 on the audience score whoa both of those seem low yeah i i know some people that really didn't like it i know my parents went to go see it with like no context and just left them like that was weird like i, I didn't understand I this it. was a cowboy movie uh, right yeah um so i enjoyed it a lot i thought it was awesome i loved it mm-hmm. next up black adam okay have you seen I, black adam yet yes i have i mentioned it to you i, I don't remember if i mentioned it to you on a podcast but i did mention I like we, hey we didn't talk if much you get about the chance it. go watch it it was okay good a mess it, it's not it's not 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 a good movie it was a mess, but I had fun watching it is the thing. And I know with how much you and I like Shazam, this also ties in with that. And there's some interesting stuff in there, too. OK, OK. Have, have, have you seen Peacemaker? Kyle, we talked about all of Peacemaker. We did I, a podcast on that. You were on that or not? I don't know. I this was. Stuff just goes in, in my head I and sh- out my head the next day. I was like I would miss anything from my fellow Missourian, James Gunn. The few, I, the, well, I t- you know, I take any opportunity I have to talk about Missouri things. I will say that there is some like Peacemaker, Suicide Squad, uh, Easter eggs in. Oh, in, okay. In so nice. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I predicted a 78. Melissa, you predicted a 48. Let's look up Black Adam. It got a 39 on the tomato meter huh. with an 89 of an audience score. Wow. I think that is the biggest gulf we have seen yet. Yeah, there you go. So, Melissa, you get the point. I'm pretty sure you've won the game at this point uh, because there's only two things left here. Uh, We have Halloween Ends. I predicted a 48. Melissa, you predicted a 50. Let's see what uh, Halloween Ends. I, I, I have heard very little about this. But I haven't heard the greatest stuff about it. 40. 40, 40 huh? on the tomato meter with an audience score of 57. Interesting. I also okay. have yet to see it. I, I didn't hear great things about the middle one, but I watched that and I had a, a, a fine. I could find time. I could tell why people didn't like it, but I think the parts of it that worked worked well on me you know it's 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 just a slasher horror movie like i can have a lot of fun with yep. those i'll probably have fun with this mm-hmm. okay last but not least black panther 2 man i i predicted well i i, I don't know i want to say my prediction was a little bit low but i also don't know mm-hmm. that might that might be around where it's sitting at I, I predicted in 82, Melissa, you predicted in 93. So let's look up. Black, I cannot spell Black Panther Wakanda forever. Here we go. It got an 84 on the tomato oh. meter and an audience score of 94. There you go. So you got eight and I got. You definitely have more than eight. Thirteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Woo-hoo. All right. Melissa, the pizza you are is the mine. Champion. The pizza is I'm yours. I'm the pizza lady. <laughs> Even though I, I wore my pizza lord hat again that I got for my birthday in hopes that I would be walking away <laughs> with pizza. <laughs> Oh, oh well. well, let's take a look at our bonus predictions. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's start with yours. You said, I'm going to read this one first so you have time to go look it up quietly on your own. Moonfall or Death on the Nile will make the least amount of money at the box office. Sure. Let me go, Out of the collection of movies we here. talked about here tonight. Um, so we'll see if you got that one right. Best reviewed movie you said was going to be Lightyear. We know that did not happen. Not at uh, all. You said more than eight Oscars between all 25 movies. Um, as for Oscar I, wins, I know we got some nominations. I think Spider-Man got an effects nomination. Nightmare Alley had some some technical category nominations. Uh. I guess we're really going to have to wait till the end of this year to see because only like four of these movies from this set of predictions were Oscar eligible. So maybe next year (laughs) we'll see what Black Panther 2 gets, which, you know, that could get costumes, production design to Angela Bassett score any number of things. Yeah. Um, we'll see that's that one's a null that one's a null for right now and we have to come back to it next year okay that's a 33 let's see here you also said the batman will mention or hint at at least one of these characters hugo strange thomas elliott and victor zaz none of them were in there you said the batman Yes, I did get that that one, though. They I don't, hinted I don't at, remember uh, these. Thomas Elliot at Hush. Um, they they, had, oh, they oh, there's some hints at. That. OK, yeah. OK. I don't remember that. OK, you get one point for that. So you get nine points. 
Um, Hugo Strange, that's that's Pierce Brosnan, right? He's in Black uh, Adam. D- 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 uh, yes, Pierce uh, Brosnan is in there. Yeah. Okay. He he plays is he- Dr. Fate. Oh, Strange and Fate are two different guys. Uh, Doctor Strange is the the Marvel one, and Doctor Fate. I know who Doctor is Strange is. I thought Hugo Strange and like Doctor oh, Hugo Strange, Doctor oh, Fate um, were the sm- same guy. No, 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 not at all. Uh, D- Hugo Strange is a Batman v- villain. He's a doctor uh, that figures out Batman's identity, and d- yeah, he's just like mad scientist Hugo Strange. Okay, so we have a Doctor Strange, another guy named Strange who's also a doctor, but he's not the Doctor Strange, and also a guy named Doctor Fate. Yes, Doctor Fate is DC <laughs> Comics's version of Doctor Strange. That's it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> this is when I feel like other people's exasperation at comic book movies. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. So I was looking up Moonfall. So you have to, well, actually, if your prediction was Moonfall or Death on the Nile will make the least amount of money at the box office, you have to look up those, and then those. you'll have to yeah. look up other movies for a sample size. So that one yeah. might take you a while. Um. Let's see here. Death on the Nile. We should have prepared these. We forgot about these bonus predictions and how much research these things involve. I'm I'm well, pretty you... certain that Moonfall is bottom of the barrel here. Um, okay. I'm I'm going down. Well, I don't know. I I don't know how. So I'm on boxofficemojo.com. It's the domestic the, the domestic box office for 2022. Um. And I, I have it in descending order for total gross. Oh, whoops! What was that? It just switched on me. What what happened here? Go back. Uh, for total gross, Spider Man okay. No Way Home is up at the top with Top Gun, Maverick, and Doctor Strange and Black Panther, Jurassic World, the Batman, Thor: Love and Thunder. They're all up there. Sonic the Hedgehog beat out B- Black Adam. Um. It also has the Eternals on there, which is, is like, that's not. Huh? I don't know why that's in there. I guess it was still in theaters in t- like early 2022 in certain ones because it came out that p- previous November. But Moonfall is way down there. But then for total gross, it, it also looked like. Um, where did it go? Night. It looked like Nightmare Alley made less than Moonfall. Oh. In terms of in which case, in which case that prediction is not true. Yeah. Uh, Triple R is also right in there at that. Hey, Mark says that Nightmare Alley, uh, it's total gross was uh, 11 million. 11.3 11.3 and then moonfall uh its total gross was 19 million weird i don't know so didn't get it didn't get it didn't get it um well, and then, yeah l- i don't l- I think my Oscar won. There's there's no way that I. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. We have to wait for the rest of these movies from this set of predictions to be Oscar eligible. So hmm. we'll talk again in February. OK. So looking at my predictions, my guess for needle drop of the year uh, was going to be sweet dreams are made of these by the Eurythmics. I guess that that might pop up in a film. It did not pop up in any of the films that we saw. Maybe it's in Morbius or Sonic 2. We don't know. Ne- never know. He's eating a c- corn dog and it's like, sweet dreams are made of these. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? 
It, they just do the the quicksilver running very fast scene again, but it's tails. Right. Yep. Exactly. I predicted that Toby and Andrew would be in No Way Home, and that was true. You got it. Yep. To the benefit of us, benefit of us all. Um, I guessed that Spider Into the Spider Verse Two would have a voice cameo from a live action Spider Man alum, whether it be a Spider Man or anybody from any of those films that is yet to yep. be seen. Uh, also yet to be seen if Mission Impossible Seven will involve some sort of futuristic travel, such as maglev train or <laughs> self driving car. That one's waiting. Uh, and I predicted that in Jurassic World Dominion, the dinosaurs would attack a Margaritaville. That didn't happen. And I predicted that the Batman would score better than either of the Batman movies featuring Ben Affleck. Sure. And like, this will be the best since the Christian Bale ones. This will do better than Batman v Superman and Justice League. And it did. That is correct. There you go. Point to me. So I, I ended up with 15 and you ended up with 10, not nine. You ended up with nine. Nine. Yeah. There you go. Fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, again, Melissa, the pizza is yours. Congratulations. You. For winning last year's tomato game. But now it's time for us to get to predicting movies for this next year. Yes. So, Melissa, I will. I, well, I'll, we'll have. Can do you mind reading off all of these n- names? Yes. And stuff like that. OK, this is our list of 26 notable releases through the end of 2022 and up through the first week of December. Oh, but we yeah. to take some of these off. Yeah, it goes to, from December to December. So we got to knock two of those off of there. Um, First week of December to. December 1st to December 1st is what we call it. So we're going to be making predictions on Avatar, The Way of Water, M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin, Quantumania, Cocaine Bear, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, John Wick 4, D&D, Honor Among Thieves, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Renfield, that movie where Nicolas Cage plays Dracula, (laughs) Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Fast 10, the live action version of The Little Mermaid, Uh, Spider-Verse 2, Across the Spider-Verse, Part 1, Elemental, which is the new Pixar movie, The Flash, Indiana Jones 5 and the Dial of Destiny, Mission Impossible 7, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, Oppenheimer, Barbie, The Marvels, uh, Disney's new live action Haunted Mansion movie, Blue Beetle, Craven the Hunter, and Dune Part 2, still Dunin. Yeah, the Dunin-ing. Dunin it and Dunin it and Dunin it well. And doing things this far out, there are some movies that seem so intangible. Like, we have no proof that they are still happening yet. Will Blue Beetle still come out on August 18th? Who knows? They they, and also, they like, seem to be drip hating information about Blue Be- Beetle out there, which amazes me because I, 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 I still can't believe that they're making that movie. Like, I, it's kind of baffling to me because he's a little bit more of an obscure character. And Wonder Woman 3 just got canceled today. Uh, mm. like all of the, all that stuff with J- James Gunn now in charge, they're starting to get their first like steps out there to clean the slate and be like, mm. here's what we want. But uh, they are making a Blue Beetle movie, <laughs> and also I'm sure there will be things that will be big next year that we just can't see that far out right now. Yeah. You know, maybe there's things that were intangibly on the slate that are now like getting slated to come out within this next year that we just don't have on this list. Maybe something small will pop up and surprise everybody and be like a huge thing. We don't know. That's kind of the fun of this. We see what what we get right and what we get wrong. Yep. Okay. First one, Melissa. Avatar. The wet guy. 
What is your prediction for Avatar the Wet Guy? You know, I'm going to go 74 on that one. (laughs) Okay. I, in the past, I have not looked up the existing scores of movies, but this year I'm going to give it a try. Sure. Uh, Avatar the original got an 82. I'm, I think this one could beat it. I'm going to say 86. I think at least on the, on the technical front, I think this is going to be a really outstanding experience. Sure. Yeah. And I do wonder that if it took him 13 years to make this movie, what's in there? What's happening? Um, it's not just that he, it's, it's t- taken him 13 years, but he says he already has plans for Avatar like six and seven. And right. I, I'm sure yeah. that like he no, like he, he well, he hasn't just been working on Avatar two. He has been working on Avatar two, three, four and five. And that's part of the delay. Like he wanted that next series to be like a really cohesive chunk, which I admire. I kind of admire this like approach where I'm going to take a lot of time to make the second one. And then I know exactly how the second one's going to lead into the next couple ones after that. Yeah. I'm happy he's doing that. I'm happy he did what felt right to him instead of taking it one at a time. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Knock at the cabin. M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. Put this on here uh, for me because he's he's one of my favorite directors. (laughs) Yeah. And we needed something to like fill that space between blockbusters. So between Avatar in December and Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania in February, we've got little knock at the cabin. Knock knock. I'm gonna go forty six. I don't think oh. that one will review critically well. Ah, uh, we don't know a lot about it yet. I think he's assembled a pretty solid cast. I don't know. I, I, I have faith in what he can do. I'm going to give like a. I'm going to give him a 65. Okay. That's fair. Still like not outstanding. <laughs> but, 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 but I think. Good about that range, maybe how one. people will receive Please. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Quantum Mania. Yes. Um Ooh, I'm going to say 72 on that one. Okay. I'm I'm going to go a little higher. This looks very promising. I've watched New Rockstars did a video where they tried pre-ranking all the movies that are going to come out in Phase 5. I saw that they for, did that. I didn't wa- 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 watch a, it, but yeah. It's a really f- interesting exercise to th- imagine where you think everything's going to rank in potential to everything else. Four out yeah. of the five of them put Quantumania first. So that gives me a lot of confidence in the film. I'm going to say... 88. Oh, man. (laughs) Next, Cocaine cocaine Bear. bear. (laughs) Imagine what this film contains. Oh, man. Uh, Like, this is the struggle. Like, part of me wants to say (laughs) this is going to be just good, stupid, dumb fun, so I should rank it higher. But that's the audience score. I think... People will have a great time with this. I don't know if it's going to review critically well, so I'll I'll just give it a 69. Why not? So you're putting this on par with Sonic 2. I think Sonic 2 is our barometer now. I mean, maybe the bear takes the cocaine and then go goes fast and gets a bunch of what? chili dogs or something. Right. Right. Eats a eats a sapphire, eats an emerald. Yeah. <laughs> what, whatever Sonic does, does he eat the chaos emeralds? I, to be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not a Sonic kid. Uh, I'm gonna guess a 58. 
Okay. That seems like a movie that understands what it is. So I think yep. it'll do at least mildly well. Hopefully the critics understand what it is, too. <laughs> but they're not just sitting there and drinking tea. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, when you started this bit, it was about sipping tea and talking about the mysteries of life. And this is reduced down to purely the act of the beverage. Like tea alone is what gets a critic riled up. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, next up, what do we got? Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Hell yeah. Um, man, I, I, we, but we both really, really enjoyed this first one. Yeah. I don't think it was as critically well-received, but I'm, Let I, me you know, see. I'm, I'm still fairly optimistic about this one. Actually, the first Shazam movie got a 90. Oh, did it really? Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Um, so we were right about that movie. <laughs> I also feel naive uh, about it, if not a little higher. Right? I do too. Um I you know, I'm I'm gonna say just a little bit lower than that. I'm gonna give it an 86. Okay, I'm gonna get ah uh, like 89. Just, just fractionally cool. lower. So our previous predictions, our holdover predictions for John Wick 4, coming out now March 24th, you said 94, I said 83. I have seen the first two John Wicks since then. I watched them with my dad. We have to watch them when my mom is out of the house because these are not movies for moms. (laughs) So I have not yet watched Parabellum. I do not know how it sets up John Wick 4. I want to bump up my score. I'm going to give mine uh, instead of an 83 and 93. I'm just one point cool. off from you. Sure thing. I'm, I'm holding strong in a 94. Okay. Next up, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Now, Melissa, when you wrote this list, I looked over it. And, and at first, I, I had a handful of like, well, maybe we can take this one out. Maybe we can take that one out. Are are you excited about the D and D movie? Because I know nothing about it, and I I know the first one did really really well in China, but I, I think it bombed here in the United States. The first Dungeons and Dragons movie from from like the early two oh, thousands. Uh, no, are you thinking of like the Warcraft of? movie? Yes, that's what I'm thinking <laughs> of. See, I don't even know what this, this thing is. I, I I was sitting there like, uh, oh, check this is the sequel. check out the trailer. <laughs> It is about a, a band of rogues. It stars Chris Pine, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, Justice Smith, others. Okay, interesting. Uh, it looks fun. Th- it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited to see Michelle Rodriguez in a fantasy setting. We've seen her like drive cars. We've seen her in like sci-fi action adventure. I want to see her with a <laughs> sword. I, I think this is going to be a good time. I'm going to say. Oh, like an 85 for Honor Among Thieves. I'm going to go 56. Okay. I'm predicting low on that one because I know D&D started out as a tabletop game, but like (laughs) video game movies typically don't do so well with few exceptions like Sonic. (laughs) Sonic apparently now the gold standard. Speaking of which, our next film is the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, man. Um, So all of like 90 percent of the announcements of Mm. that came out about this movie. I was not excited about Uh, Uh Chris Pratt as Mario. Not going to be doing the Mario voice. It's going to be his own interpretation. Uh, Charles Martinet, who does the actual voice of Mario and many of the other characters, probably really only going to get relegated to a cameo voice somewhere in there. I don't know. But also, how do you like you don't want to have Mario talking the entire movie. So I I, I don't know. The whole thing is mixed. That first like teaser trailer came out 
not jazzed about that one whatsoever. However, is that the one with the snowball fight? Yes. Um, th- so the Jack Black as B- 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 Bowser, incredible casting, yeah. amazing. One of the best things about that. The animation looks incredible. Uh, uh-huh. Some character designs look a little squished or stuff like that. A little interesting stuff there. But but yeah, the like some of the voice acting seems weird. They're just making some weird creative choices. However, I know that the trailer that came out like a week or two ago now. People are going nuts. They're like, this looks awesome. This looks really fun. I haven't seen that one yet. I don't know what to make of it. Um, I. I, w- I wonder if I give this like a high 70, like a 77, if if that is like a good middle of the, 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 the road. Sure. Score for that. I'm. One. I haven't seen this new trailer yet. I, I did see the one where they like throw snowballs at him. I'm like, that's yep. pretty cute. That's cute enough. Uh, I I'm going to be a, a little bit more tame with mine. I'm going to put mine at. I'm going to respect Sonic, the gold standard, <laughs> which is at a 69. I want to put this at a, a 68. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. I think you next that I need to yes. actually like Google anything about Renfield because I know. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> All I knew about Renfield is that it is a movie where Nick Cage plays Dracula. I haven't even heard who plays Renfield. It turns out it's Nicholas Holt, who is lovely. I really enjoy him every time. I just saw him in the menu. He's very good in that. So that's promising. Uh, This also features Ben Schwartz and Aquafina. So I'm very curious how they fit in here. Is this meant to be a comedy? Like a dark comedy take? Renfield is is an upcoming American horror comedy film directed by Chris McKay. Based on an huh. original pitch by Robert Kirkman. Huh. Interesting. Chris McKay, best known for directing and editing three seasons of Robot Chicken, two seasons oh. of Moral Oral. Um, huh. He made his feature directorial debut with the Lego Batman movie. That uh, movie's he also great. Directed, he also directed the film The Tomorrow War. Okay. And attached to direct Renfield. Interesting. All right. So he, he has the comedy chops. He has the like spoof comedy chops for sure. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's see here. Back to Renfield. Um I I'm I'm gonna go 86. Mm. I feel like that'll be a surprise hit. I kind of want to give this a 77 because it looks like two fangs. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool to me, but I really have nothing to go on yet. Uh, I don't it's, mean that to be a, a. It's Dracula's like collar on his cape. Yeah. It's the right. Yeah. I like that. It looks like a vampiric number to write down. <sighs> Next up, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm going to go 93. I'm going to go. I think this is going to be very good. I Guardians of the Galaxy, my favorite franchise, my favorite characters, my, my favorite feelings. This looks like it is going to go hard. But it, and you, I think there's been a lot about of how it will do critically. I. I think it could do well critically, I think, given the amount of time and care that have been put into this film, how this mm-hmm. is going to be James Gunn pulling out all the stops yeah. and how the Guardians have been a bit more insular than other branches of the MCU. And this isn't going to I don't think this is going to have the issue that other people have had with recent MCU movies 
where they also have to be a launching platform for somebody new. Like this isn't going to have to this fit in like an America in Chavez or Riri end, Williams. Yeah. yeah. So this is, I think it's going to get to be more efficient about what it wants to do and not also have to, it, like this is going to tie together the two things that came before it. It's more about that and less about what are we setting up next. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I got, I got to give it my whole heart and my whole heart is a 98. Ooh, real high. Well, perfect, um, incredible film. I mean, 93 is high too. Like we, we both think this film is going to be really good, right? You're, you're trying to outsmart me. You're tricking me. And, and, okay. And this is a game, Melissa. <laughs> Play the game. <laughs> I, I do want what I actually put down as the highest score to be what I truly think is going to get the highest score out of all okay. these movies. Cool. And I think Guardians will do well, but I don't think it'll do as well as other things. Uh, <laughs> Man. Okay. I'm... I'm going to give it a 96. I'm going to put it at Maverick level. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Next. Fast 10. Oh, man. Um, Fast 10. I feel like this is just going to be a jumbled mess of amazingness, right? Just, just complete spectacle plot barely there who knows how they got in space but uh, <laughs> the, like uh, the, the air and space dogs are already out there the, who who knows what's happening in fast <laughs> the space 10. buddies right the space buddies yeah um, fast and the furious 10 is space buddies 3 <sighs> i i'm i'm gonna rank this one low because i think critically it's gonna do bad bad but audience score is gonna be through the roof i'm i'm gonna say this is a 45 um i'm gonna go <laughs> 73 to 72 I'm also just looking at these numbers and if I can see them, I'm like, I haven't typed a two in a while. Throw two in there. <laughs> there you go. Next, uh, the Disney live action adaptation of the little mermaid. <laughs> um, how, how, how have their live action adaptions been taken? I, I feel uh, like they've done better than people expected them to do. I right like I feel like people are middling about them I think it's been a trend that they were getting tired of but from what mm -hmm. I've seen I don't know like this one looks like it's taking itself very sincerely people like the casting of um her name's Hallie Bailey like you look at it too fast and you think somebody wrote Hallie Berry wrong but her name is Hallie Bailey every time I looked at this movie yeah. I had to do a double take her name is Hallie Bailey Melissa McCarthy's playing Ursula. Uh, Ursula, go one of the plus size icons. Seventy nine. Um, I go a little higher. I'll go an eighty one. I, I mean, it's it's Little Mermaid. It is what you know it is. I don't know if yep. they're making any large plot overhauls. It's also but Disney. I don't know. Next, next we are porting over Spider Verse two across the spider verse is it still a part yeah. one i don't remember if it is still considered part one i i think they might have dropped that in favor of having what will be part two just be the third ah. that, that can't have its own subtitle but i also don't remember if that's correct okay so okay across the well we ye last year when we thought it was supposed to come out this year you put a 93 and i put a 91 I'd still I'd, say that's solid. Yeah, I might put that 91 seems a little low. I don't know. I is it very silly if I put 92? Like 90. No, that's fine. <laughs> like I don't want to match you or outbid you. 
but I'll give it one more point. That works for Next, me. Next, going from animation into animation, we have the new Pixar movie, Elemental, about a fire who falls in love with a water. Oh. Um, I'm going to do... Let's see, what do I want to do with this one? I'm going to do an 82. I'll give it... Hmm. I don't think I've even so this seen year, a trailer for that one. I I saw a brief trailer ahead of well what uh, Fableman's I guess. Mm. I, it looks cute. Neat I mean, character it's, designs it's, in it. Pixar, if you so like yeah. those cloud people, if you like those cloud people from the short that came in front of Up, there's more of that to be found. Cool. Well, let me give this a. Uh, Uh, 91. There you go. There 90, you go. 90. Next, if it is to be believed, The Flash will come out on June 23rd. Ooh. Um, so our, our predictions from l- l- last year, mine was a 74. Yours was an 82. And I will say that from what I've heard about people who have seen The Flash in production, as messy as the production has been, they say everything that is in front of the camera looks very solid. And I think that's one of the reasons why it is continuing to to be a film. Yeah, um, I think I think I might lower my score just a little bit. I'm going to put it down to a 70. Let's see here. 70. There we go. Uh, let's see. What else do I have at around this level? Uh, 82. That's like a bit higher than Little Mermaid and a bit less than <laughs> Honor Among Thieves. And I think that sounds right. That seems like approximately where its enjoyment level may be. I'll leave mine at 82. Next, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Set your dial to destiny, Kyle. Um, what if I want to change that dial? Don't. Can I do that? You've been explicitly no. told not to many times. <laughs> Don't change that dial. Um... I don't know, man, because that, that's the thing is like those the the, the Indiana J- J- Jones trilogy. It has its ups and downs, but is always considered very favorable um, or favorably that fourth one, however, considered awful. <laughs> so I don't know where this one is going to be. I, I. I'm not sure I. I think I kind of want to go that like middling route again. I think I want to do another 70. Okay. I have heard very positive reactions to the trailer that we just got into. I think there was a little additional footage shown at D23. Maybe Mm -hmm. people speak of this movie very fondly from what they know about it. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to (laughs) go. Ah, 94. Mm. I think they know what they need to do after what happened in that kingdom with those crystal skulls. (laughs) Oh, don't mention it. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, 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 I hope that one does. Good. I want it to do well. We'll see. Next, we are moving over Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. You had originally given an 86. I had given an 89. This is from before, before we saw Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Um, and Even like, though they are separate franchises. I think there are separate like, uh, franchises, but I think that's why we star- still we bumped it down to like high eighties is, is like, man, he's, he's getting old. Like he's, he's getting real old. Um, so I I don't know if it's just going to be as good as fallout. 
was because that one was incredible. I don't know how I, you can beat that, but I think we have to bump our scores up. <laughs> I am going to be bumping my scores up. I the fact that this is a part one makes me feel like people will feel like this story is incomplete. Well, what? Let me go back. What did Dune get all the, a long time ago? What was the result for Dune? Dune. I don't remember. Okay, so the actual I'm I'm just considering Dune as a test subject for it also being a part one. And that sure, got an yeah. 83. I well, hmm. I think the thing with Dune is that that is specifically based off of a series of books. True. And where they cut it in that book makes no sense. <laughs> I I think I'm I'm going to go 93. I'm going to go mm, No, oh, I'm, I'm going to do 94. Maver- I'm going to do 94. If Man, so could this stressful. be as good as <laughs> could this be as good as Maverick? I'm going to put it just a hair below Maverick at 95. Yeah. Just to consider yeah. the 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 part 1 conundrum. People may, you know, that may give it a lower emotional rating than a, the whole story that is Top Gun Maverick beginning middle end. Next, we have uh Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer about Oppenheimer, the guy who made the nuclear bomb. Yeah. Starring all your Christopher Nolan friends. Killian Murphy, others. I think it's pronounced Cillian, right? I don't know. I feel like I've heard both, and I don't know what's actually true. Anyways, uh, Oppenheimer, the new Nolan film. Nolan's always pretty, pretty well received, right? especially cr- yeah. cr- cr- critically i'm i'm gonna do an 88 on that one eight i was also thinking of hovering in that range i'm i feel like we've been really close on a lot of these and we haven't had any like moon falls or morbius is in here to really spice things up with a low rating yep. we're feeling very positive about everything everything's graduating with at least a b plus um i i'm gonna go 86 this looks good to me but just based on the fact that uh, Tenet did not do very well critically, that one got a 69. Tenet is as good as Sonic 2. Still haven't seen the end. <laughs> I, I started watching it on HBO Max. Couldn't finish the movie. I got busy, went to sleep, all that stuff. The next day, took it off the service. <laughs> Couldn't finish it. <laughs> oh well (laughs) i forgot that story is so funny kyle there's nothing (laughs) stopping you the only thing stopping you from finishing tenet is like five dollars yeah i don't want to pay five (laughs) dollars i have so many streaming services already (laughs) (laughs) next we have Greta gerwig's barbie the movie about barbie I, oh man, I don't know. I I feel like this could go either way that it's really critically acclaimed and then people end up not liking it despite them thinking they would because everything that's c- come out of this I think suggests the opposite whereas I think most people are going to love this but I don't know if it's going to be critically well received. I don't know. I, we don't know a lot about the tone of the thing yet. Right. Or like how cheesy it'll be or how funny it will be or how serious it'll be. Who knows? I I'm I'm going to go. 56. I'm going to go low on that one. Oh, I'm going higher. Let me go. 83. 
That looks fun. Mm-hmm. Next, speaking of prominent female heroes, we have the Marvels. Nia DaCosta's The Marvels. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, man, I still like that's the thing is th- this one. I, I feel like we're due for a trailer for this real. Soon. Yes. Yes. Um, maybe Christmas time it, at, at the absolute mm-hmm. latest would be Super Bowl. But yeah, then, that's I, what I'm thinking. I, I feel like that's the absolute latest we would get get that so i still don't really know much about the plot of this or how well it's going to be received i don't know either i i think uh, i don't know man um 66 oh i don't think it's going to be well received i think i'm gonna love it but i i, I think it's gonna be like in that range of like Thor, Love and Thunder, Doctor Strait, like a lot of problems with having this like ensemble cast. Hmm. Let's. I'm looking up the Rotten Tomatoes score for Candyman from the same director that got an 84. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to put it. Ah. Uh, let's put this one in. God, I've been hovering right about the 80s. I'm going to give it like an 85. Okay. I think I, I, this looks like something they could pull off. I think they can do it. Sure. Next is a, sure, sure, a much sure. more mysterious film. This is Disney's new Haunted Mansion adaptation. Nothing to do with the Eddie Murphy film about the agents of Evers and Evers Realty. <laughs> It's about a new cast of characters. <laughs> Owen Wilson's in it. Who uh, who else? Wow. Haunted Mansion. Yeah, I, we all know what he says. We all, we all know what he does. <laughs> Haunted Mansion. To, to Owen Wilson, Tiffany Hash, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, Danny DeVito, Morbius, <laughs> Rosario Dawson. <laughs> Morbius is in this. He's in there as himself. <laughs> Morbius is a way more fun name to say than Jared Leto. I don't know if it's Leto or Leto, but I know Morbius is Morbius. Leto. Leto. Jared Leto, yeah. I'm gonna Dan Levy, Winona Ryder. I think that one will be I know there's solid. more things to 74. say about a film than me just yelling names at you. But it's just like spooky haunted mansion adventure. I don't know if there's much plot to speak of yet. Yeah, I I think it'll be fa- fine. It'll be serviceable, right? Just kind of par for the course. Seventy four. Uh, that mansion sure will be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> right, no doubt about that. Nine hundred and ninety nine ghosts can be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I love just you will believe a mansion. <laughs> Nobody you leaves and says I thought that mansion was false. <laughs> oh man. Uh Good stuff. Let's see. I'm gonna go. Oh, I don't know. 79. Okay. Next, even more mysterious. We're getting into the mystery part of the year. Yeah. Like when you get like 10 months out and you haven't seen anything, these are just like a Mm -hmm. list of names. You don't know where to stand. Uh, Where do you stand with Blue Beetle? How do you think he's going to do? What's Blue Beetle's name? Um, I don't even know, to be honest. I probably do somewhere in the recesses of my mind, but it's not on the tip of my tongue right now. There's a newer one. Too. Well, there's all right. So there is Ted Cord. He is one of the originals. Uh, Ted Cord, Blue Beetle. Uh, he runs Cord Industries, all that stuff. There's a newer, younger guy. Jaime, I think is his name. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, Jaime Reyes. 
Jaime Reyes. Yeah. When I, I Google I think this it. One so is that's about Jaime. If I'm Jaime. not mistaken. Jaime Reyes. Um, man, I, I, I don't know. Everything I've seen about this so, so, so far is surprisingly good. Um, we haven't seen much, but we've gotten like set photos. I think we've gotten a poster, like or, or, mm. or like a like a, a logo poster, just like not the official like movie thing, but here, like, hey, Blue Beetle logo, here it is, bam. Hey. Everything has looked good so far. I I don't know who's really attached to the film or anything like that. I think it'll be fine. I I I, I think it'll be pretty solid. I'm I'm gonna go. Oops, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say 76. 76. I'm I'm gonna go 71. Uh it's just but this is an uncertainty rating. Sure. I I need yeah. to learn more. Understandable. Understandable. Next, uh, another character we barely know, Craven the Haunter. Craven T. I am Hunter. familiar with him. Spider-Man I know he, Island here. I I've I've seen him around. I know he hunts. He's Aaron Taylor Johnson. Aaron Taylor Johnson was very fun in Bullet Train. He was great in Bullet Train. I I I I, I liked his physicality. I think he is yes. like bulking up for this role, which I think is g- great. I don't have any faith in this movie whatsoever, especially with the the performances of. Venom, Venom 2, and Morbius. Uh, I'm rating this one real low. I'm going to go 42. 42. Ooh. Oh, I was going to go even lower than that. Um, but, but with the knowledge that I'll probably have a fun enough time, I, I enjoy Venom. I enjoy Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. It asked me, would you let Carnage be here? And I said, sure, bring him on in. <laughs> He was invited to. <laughs> this holiday season, bring Carnage into your home with a it's Blu-ray just, or DVD. It's it's this weird fascination that Sony has with their Spider-Man movie rights thing and trying to make the villains happen. And trying to make them happen without Spider-Man. Uh-huh. Is the thing. Like, Craven the Hunter, I don't know if he's an interesting character by himself. But with Spider-Man yeah. there, with with this like, hey, I've conquered every other animal on the planet. Here's this the, the, this like man spider thing, right? Like, let me hunt the spider man. Like, that is more interesting I... when he is this like out. Like, he is this like Tarzan, like hunter, George of the jungle, like character walking into New York City. Steady trying uh-huh. to hunt Spider-Man and not necessarily in a comedic way. Uh, Craven's last hunt. That book is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is very d- 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 dark. He kick, kill a Spider-Man and wants to like take his p- place and do all that. Like it's, it's creepy. I, I just, with, how do you make that without Spider-Man? <laughs> What uh-huh. I'm hoping is that in this movie, we see him kill a spider and we see him kill a man. And then in the future, when he meets <laughs> Spider-Man, he's like, this is what I've been training for. <laughs> <laughs> They've come back to haunt me. I've joined forces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put a 33 for Mr. Craven T. Hunter. That uh, sounds about right. Yeah. Does he have a day job like how Michael Morbius is a doctor? Or does he just haunt full time? I think he gets involved with like different hunting organizations or even like um, because because he like he's not about just about like, let's kill all of the lot. Like he's about safe hunting sometimes, too. Mm. So I think he gets involved with organizations like that every now and then. I nice. don't know exactly. Good to know he's got facets. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. The final film coming out November 3rd next year as of this recording. This is the last uh, big anticipatory tentpole movie we've got on our list. Dune 2. 
Still doing it. Right. We don't know yeah. what's going to be pushed to late November. We, Dune we've two, never the electric doodaloo. <laughs> doodaloo. Dune two. <laughs> Battle of the Smithsonian. Um man, I don't know. Uh ooh, Dune two. I really liked that first Dune. I thought that that was pretty good. But it was weird that it just stopped halfway <laughs> in the story. Yeah, yes. I think it's going to be good, but I, I, I think, man, I, I think watching these m- movies like together is where it's really going to be like, this is awesome. Yeah. Because visually, this movie was incredible. Like the way it looked and all that stuff was great. Um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go. It, it, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> We've been recording for over two hours and we're kind of melting. 86. 86. Okay. I, given that the first one was pretty highly regarded, but was knocked down by feeling incomplete, I think this is going to do better. I'm going to put this one at, mm, um, yeah. oh, like a 91. You might be right. Mm. All right, let me let us review, not review in full, but what is your highest and lowest score? Is there anything you want to alter? Oh, man. Uh, I have Even just for the sake of variety. I have John Wick 4 as my highest. Oh, okay. My highest is. Oh, like, I think Friday I know three. what I want my top three to be. In fact, I might make that a prediction. Like in any order, this is what I think the top three highest reviewed movies on this list will be. Right now, it's uh, Guardians at 96, followed closely by Mission Impossible and Indiana Jones. And John John McForay, I had just slightly lower than you. Okay. So that's. Um, Biggest upset movie this so is i'm rounding that of, down hmm? kind of counter to oh the predictions we just made but i'm i'm gonna predict the biggest upset of like one we thought oh i would like be that good but then t- turns out to be bad um or or oh i thought you meant like the opposite or, way or, like or, a or, like or, like a maverick like situation biggest discrepancy it, it, oh from okay our, our okay predi- let me let me put that let me say biggest okay. discrepancy um discrepancy i hope i spelled that right um uh, biggest discrepancy i think is going to be uh let's see what do we got here we got Marlo's barbie let's do Ooh, I could say Oppenheimer. That feels prime for a. Yeah, that could be an anything. interesting one. Yeah, though it's Nolan though, and I don't feel like it's gonna be like it's gonna be a spy thriller. So I feel like he'll he'll be fine. But there's no like big action set piece unless they're showing bits of the war. I don't know. Um, let let's go Indiana. I, oh, I think okay. That's you our think that could be wild anywhere? Card. Yeah. Okay. I think that's our biggest wild card. Indiana Jones. I'm adjusting a couple things, just like maybe Knock of the Cabins is 62, not a 64. Maybe Honor Among Thieves is an 84, not an 85. I'm just doing tiny little point variations now that I'm done. Sure. Um, let's see here. What's another good prediction? good prediction do we know what the plot of fast 10 is gonna be do we know like a basic outline no you know what i'm gonna swap my scores for fast x and little mermaid because looking at it now i feel like fast x might do better than little mermaid okay okay um Universe two, and we know. Let's see here. 
I do anything with Spider Verse Two? <laughs> what may be done with it? Yeah, what can I predict about that one? Um. I'm still guessing Man. that we uh, I'm carrying over my guess that we will have a voice cameo from some live action Spider-Man alum. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Super Mario Bros movie. I wonder, okay, super, let's see, there's going to be a haunted, well, I can't say haunted, let's see, uh, Luigi's haunted mansion reference. Oh, Luigi's mansion, good. Yeah. Um, Super Mario. Oops. Ah. I don't understand how any of this works. In Super Mario, cool. Yeah, just I'm just I'm Luigi's Mansion. It's not haunted mansion. I should know this. I played the game. Um, let's see here. This is the part where is, we just sit and stare and think. Who's, who's Rami Malek playing an op in Highland? Uh, I, I want to do so, something with that one. Let me see here. He's playing Dr. No. Right, yeah. I, I, like, my if we don't know who he's playing, my prediction is he will be a villain. He will be an antagonist of some, some uh, sort. Again. Um, Maybe he's Oppenheimer's best is. friend. He, he, yeah, I don't know. Let's see who is. I don't know. Uh, I Rami like. Malik. I know Oppenheimer was a real guy, but I don't know the characters of his life. Was he married? I don't know. Playing an Oppenheimer. Let's see here, Rami Malik. Where are you, Rami Malik? Where are you? What's going on here? I bet he's still gonna have his mustache. You know what? I I predict a great mustache this year. I don't know who has it. Oh, yeah. I don't know in which film there will be a notable mustache in the film of 2023. Besides Mario. Besides Mario and Luigi. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm looking at a variety article to see where to see if it says who he's cast as. It's full of mystery. No, it just says he was cast. When when did this article come out? December of last year. That's yeah. Who is he playing? Even if it gives you a name, you're not going to know what that name means. Well, I can look up the person to be like, oh, is he a, is he a bad guy? I don't know if Wikipedia articles will tell you in such black and white terms. <laughs> It's not going to be like Google searching something and just has the answer up there. Bad man. <laughs> right? Alignment, chaotic evil. Okay. Well, I don't. So I, I just off of a quick Google search, I can't easily find who he's playing. So my prediction is going to be uh, that Rami Mal. Oh, I cannot spell. Malik is. Um, I'm playing in antagonist in Oppenheimer. You have a great mustache. What's another good one? Oh, you might have the great mustache. Here, here we we go. Um, Blue Marvel in the Marvels. Yeah, I was also going to predict that. I'm That'd I'm going one. through Spotify playlists trying to pick out my needle drop of the year. It, I've only done this twice, mm. but I still haven't gotten it right. I'm thinking of some sort of 80s or 90s like girl anthem, something that could fit the timeline of uh d- timeline maybe of the d- Guardians Three Zune, 
Maybe it could fit into Barbie or the Marvels. You don't think could they're going to do the like, I'm a Barbie girl song or some like See, well, remix I, of that? I know they will, but I want to predict something that has a chance to show up in more than one film. Not like oh, okay. if it's not in Barbie, I'm not hearing it anywhere else next year. I don't I don't think it's maybe that's a really great scene in Renfield. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl. In the mummy world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's in Renfield and Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Um, God, uh, let's see if it man, if Oppenheimer is a comedy. What what do they do? What what, what oh is a joke God. they could do in, in it just that? keeps cutting to that footage of the real explosion anytime anything bad happens like oh no I i've got two dates on this. the same night oh. <laughs> oh man um let's see i want to do i i, I want to do something about D D, but i don't know like i are it, it this is like an in-world D&D game, right? Or is it about characters playing the tabletop game? Do we know? I don't think there's any sort of framing device like a Jumanji. I think this right, is truly like, like you're in the world. world. Okay. Um, I, uh, I think I'm I've got, I think one, I have a honest. needle drop. I just scanned through my 80s playlist. I see what perked my interest. I'm going to go this year with Like a Prayer by Madonna. Okay. Madonna sounds about right. Right. Oh, knock at the cabin. We need to predict what the twi twist is. What? What oh is my the twist? <laughs> yeah, let's cold predict the twist now. God. So um, all we know is that Dave Batista. And his little gang go up to the cabin and they knock at it and they tie up the dads. The little girl is not tied up. She's she might be OK. And they're like, you, you have to make a very important decision about saving the world. Like, that's what the tagline is at the end of the movie. Will you make the choice? What do you think the choice is? It's it's going to be that like. If the two of them live, the apocalypse happens. So they need to like kill one or the other. I I feel like like they, they have to I'm, make a choice between do like do I die or do you die? I'm gonna guess that there is something important about the cabin. Like that building, like the cabin itself or the land it's on, there's a specific reason. Why Dave Bautista and his little gang went to yeah. that cabin specifically. I, I think like there's some sort of logistical importance there. Knock at the cabin. <laughs> Let's see if twist. next year I remember what phrases like great mustache and cabin is important mean. Um let's see. To uh, or is it something like are like are these Oh man, it, like are are the like I I feel like it's the two guys, the two dads. Two two daddies. Right. Two Is the cabin important or are the dads important? We don't know yet. Um two zaddies have to decide who to kill. Do I do I want to say of the two of them? Yeah, of the two of them. She's only walking out of there with one dad? Yep. You can only have one dad in this life. <laughs> that's okay. Batista can be your new daddy. Right, that's, he's like, I'm your new dad. Rupert Grant's still your uncle. What if they are like exes somehow? Like all all of them are like exes or of one of them of of one of the uh, yeah of one of them and they're like not telling like secret history. 
Mm. We're all the people who could have been your parents. Or they are the parents in like an alternate universe, and that's what they're here from. There's th- this this ca- cabin is somehow like the nexus point between all of these universes. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just. <laughs> You're not gonna get this one, but I think haunted mansion is gonna have a C reference, a reference to the Su- Society of Explorers of and Adventurers, which is part okay. of Disney Parks lore. Okay, I've 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 been on the like haunted mansion ride, at least the one one in Flo- in Florida, right? Yes. Um. Well, yeah, I, I don't know anything about all all that stuff. Um. Let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm gonna do <gasps> one one more. I want to do it about Spider Verse across mm. the Spider Verse. Um. We, we know we, we have Miles, Gwen. We know we got Miguel um, from Spider Man twenty ninety nine. We have um, um, the 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 Indian Spider Man. Yeah. Um, will this introduce Morlin? There's a villain. Morlin. I, th- I think that's his name. Let me look up his this guy's it's, name. It's Spider-Man wild villain. that for as many times as I've heard you talk about Spider-Man comics, you can still mention new characters. Morlin is this guy. So he was he was kind of the like um Let's see here. Where's the Let me get this one. See what this guy says here. According to Wikipedia, Morlin um First created in 2001 by J. Michael Straczynski uh, and John Ramita Jr. We just watched something that J. Michael Straczynski just did during Horror Month. You and I? He wrote Happy Death Day. Oh! Uh, So, yeah, created um, uh, Moreland. Uh, Moreland is the blah, 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 blah. Uh, He is an entity from Earth 001 that hunts all of the spider totems by traveling to the many multiverses of Marvel Comics. He's best known as the temporary killer of the Earth 616 version of Spider-Man in this story. Spider-Man, the other and is the main antagonist of the Spider-Verse storyline in the comics in which he and his estranged family, the Inheritors, attempt to kill all the versions of Spider-Man as prophesied by him. I I think that's a good prediction. (laughs) Across the Spider-Verse... We'll introduce Morlin, and I think that'll also be good because I know Sony also wants to do their Madam Web movie, and yeah. uh, they're like live action stuff. And so once they get the like Spider Fam together, all these different multi verses, Morlin makes these like these prophecies by like feeling the web. Right, like a spider can know uh, like all the point, and that's also what Madam Web can do, kind of. So, Morlin. If you talk about comics for too long, I'll I'll glaze over and I'll look at the middle distance, and I keep thinking about <laughs> what if Oppenheimer was a comedy? Like the bomb goes off, and it's just a slow zoom in on his face, and the curb your enthusiasm music plays. <laughs> <laughs> goodness gracious <laughs> it's the oh god what's um oh why am i not remembering the guy's name uh he played benny uh, hill huh benny hill no uh he, he played the the adam's dad oh you didn't see black adam damn it uh um, the ad the adam or the Atom. Uh, God, what's his name? The 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 meme where he's just like, eh, eh. 
No, the, the, the old guy. <laughs> what? Y'all are screaming this meme at me right now. I know it. Um, the meme where the guy has the Larry coat David? over his arm and he just looks around? No. <laughs> this the guy? Yeah, it's Larry David. About. It's the meme of yes! Larry J J J J J David just like shrugging, just being, just being like, eh. <laughs> right? Like the mm -hmm. bomb explodes. You, you, hear, you hear all that stuff and him just being like, eh. <laughs> Wait, so he's in Black Adam, Larry David? He plays the original uh, the, the, the the Adam. Like he he is there, Hank Pip him. Bi, 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 oh, basically. Wow. Yeah. Well, I really don't know what's in this film. <laughs> yep. You got Hawkman, you got uh Dr. Fate, you got the Adam, all sorts of people when, in, in, in here. When will DC bring us the Thanagarian snare beast? I, you, you never know. <laughs> we have Hawkman in, in here, though I don't think he's the Thanagarian version in this one, but whatever. I, finally, I want somebody to dust off that old idea from the 90s where, spider where Superman fights a big spider. <laughs> they did that in Wild Wild West. <laughs> right, but they, yeah, but that's a mechanical spider. Somebody could still fight a big biological spider. You know, I that, really that hope... That is the, yes. the like Kevin Smith st yes, story. Yes, joke. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, good. yes. <laughs> I know, I know what that is. Like he's the one who taught me the phrase Thanagarian snare beast because they're like you can't just fight a spider, and he's like, well, give it a sci-fi name. <laughs> I I really hope that after the success of Dune, we get more movies with really big bugs. Okay, yeah, more more big bugs. Maybe that'll be on my list for twenty twenty four. Big bugs. Big bugs. I like big bugs, and I cannot lie. Except not me. I don't like big bugs. I hate bugs. There you go. Melissa, we have made our predictions. <laughs> we have we done did. all of that stuff. It has been accomplished. Uh, we have been recording for quite some time now. We did it. We done it. We doomed it. Okay. We doomed it. That's it. We're done after that one. Uh <laughs> Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter, co-host and Hive, which happens to be down right now. Uh, but you guys can follow all of the stuff that we do at the whatnots at the whatnots on those very same social medias. Uh, if you are watching the YouTube ver version, we got some more videos over there for you to check out. That would help us out a ton. So please go like, share and subscribe. This has been number 216 of the captain's log. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.